In the 1970s, the bathrooms were the workhorse of the home. Often there was only one bathroom per family. You know, they were the minimum size. So they had to be extremely functional. They were really durable in terms of material being used. So there was a, a little bit of a carryover from the 60s. They were very, very bold with the colours, with the textures. And things like fluffy seat covers. But it actually started to get a little bit more natural in colour and tone and texture. So the 70s started to go into the sort of terracottas and the oranges, tiles running right up to the ceiling, fully tiled bathrooms, which was a common feature of a 70s bathroom. The bathrooms of the 1980s saw a transition from the 70s where we had the bright colours and bold patterns into more of a natural palette. So we have the finishes of sort of natural timbers, muted tones, and that sort of gave more of a, a softer feel to the bathrooms. The bathrooms in 80s, they were much larger than 70s. They wanted to have amenity in their own home where they can enjoy, relax. People were working hard and earning more money. They could spend their money providing amenities in their own home, which was like soaking bathtub and uh, double vanity. In the 90s, more people were travelling around the world, so they were uh, experiencing hotel bathrooms, and a lot of that aesthetic and vibe started to come into homes. The materiality started to get a little bit more luxurious. Underslung baths, beautiful stone elements, just a little bit of luxury in your bathroom. In the early 1990s, we saw lots of laminate in our bathrooms, but by the end, we saw polyurethane finish being introduced to our cupboard doors, which was a much more hard-wearing paint finish. The other thing about bathrooms in the 90s is really people were starting to think about the resale. The materials and the fixtures and fittings were less about the family's individual ideas of what they wanted to have in their bathrooms, their colours and their bright textures, but more to appeal to a broader market. Our bathrooms were much more neutral. There was lots of white, there was wall-mounted taps and much bigger mirrors. The bathrooms of the noughties continued that sort of a minimalist approach where we saw a lot of simple colours, simple palettes, uh, black, white, Carrera. The handles and fixtures were all streamlined. Sometimes the use of uh, natural stone around the bathroom and also the vanity was becoming that uh, feature in the bathroom. So we had double vanities, we had larger bathrooms, allowing the occupants of the home to find a space to relax and unwind. In 2010, the bathrooms were coming out of minimalism. We were using neutral and light tones. We saw a bench-mounted vanity, frameless shower screens, a lot of ceramic tiles, laminate, coloured tapware and freestanding baths. We saw a sensory sort of spa experience being introduced into the 2010s bathrooms. It's all about a whole new level of hotel luxe with superior lighting, more options in the tapware in terms of types of finishes. Bathrooms of today and going into the future are about pampering and about wellness. It's a place where it should be easy to disconnect and, and recharge. So the finishes of bathrooms today are about uh, giving you that sense of luxury and quality, so with beautiful veined marbles and texture and materials. The bathrooms have um, also incorporated the use of humidity sensors and smart lighting. They're becoming a lot larger, I think, as well. It's not just a space where you have to serve a purpose, but I think you want to get that, that idea of being quite lush and luxe.